Well, from the counterculture of the 60s to being honored by the culture of today and the United States Postal Service, we've got a very special guest today, Janie Hendricks, the sister of legendary guitarist Jimi Hendrix, right here on The Kiosk Presents. Welcome, Janie. Oh, thank you, Brian. Thanks for having me. And I know you're coming to us from the South by Southwest Music Festival in Austin, Texas, and just wanted to say first, you know, our, our thoughts and our prayers are going out to the people uh, injured and, and killed their families uh, by that terrible incident uh, that happened. Absolutely. Absolutely. I hope that they are doing what better, and um, it's really, it's a tragedy. It sure is. Well, now, today, um, of course, we're here to celebrate uh, the life of Jimi Hendrix, your brother. They're going to have the uh, first day issue ceremony for the post, the United States Postal Service stamp. What a great honor that is. It really is. Um, it's a great honor, Brian, to be recognized, for Jimmy to be recognized as an American icon and to have his beautiful image on a stamp to remind us every day as we send out letters, cards, um, anything in the in the mail with his image on it. Well, and I couldn't wait to wake up this morning and go to uh, USPS.com and, and see what it looks like. It is an amazing, colorful, beautiful work of art. And it's not just the stamp. I mean, the whole presentation, how it looks like a, a 45 RPM record sleeve and the psychedelic colors to it, it's just beautiful. It is. It is indeed beautiful as far as it being like a 45 um, that's very reflective of how Jimmy learned how to play the guitar. My dad had a 45 uh, record collection, and he would put those on, listen to the blues, and start playing with Muddy Waters and uh, the various artists. And so that's, I think they did a great job with this project um, and having it a forever stamp. It definitely will be part of our lives forever. Right, isn't that amazing? It's it's it's, uh, it's a forever stamp for a forever musician. How do you think he would feel being uh, Jimmy would feel being you know recognized alongside you know greats that he would have known like Ray Charles and Johnny Cash and and Lydia Mendoza people like that. I think almost embarrassed oh. because he's very <laughs> shy. But um, mm -hmm. you know, I think that he's very much deserving of it. I think that as we feel he is the greatest guitarist ever. I think as an American icon, it's a wonderful way to honor him. Well, that's for sure. You know, it's funny, I, you mentioned your father. I, I, uh, I had uh, seen an interview where you said that he would never let you listen to a radio station that didn't have <laughs> Jimmy's music on it. <laughs> that's absolutely true. <laughs> we oh, had all the cassette tapes in the car, so we listened to that, and every now and then, uh, we would listen to the radio, but only a station that played Jimmy. That's great. Well, and then I also saw when you were six years old, you had an encounter with Jimmy, and, and uh, you had said that he said that he would always protect you. And, and now, really, you're kind of are protecting him in a sense, aren't you? You're so involved with all the memorabilia and the things that come out about his life. Oh, absolutely. Um, that actually, I call that picture the cosmic promise because he was promising that he would take care of me and I was promising him that when I grew up, I would take care of him. Mm -hmm. um, ironically, I grew up and ironically, I am taking care of him, although in my mind then I thought he'd still be here, but he's alive in spirit and his music continues to live on and that's what I really cultivate and take care of him. After all, he did all the heavy lifting when it came to recording the music, over 110 songs he wrote. Mm. Um, but as far as putting out the posthumous releases and the sync licensing and uh, the publishing and handling, well, unfortunately, sometimes legal battles, but um, mm. also putting out documentaries and, um, yeah, we've completely managed his um, music in the best way that we see fit so thank you well and I think if it's done with love I mean how you know how much how much better could be uh, of a job could be done when people that really care are, are kind of keeping track of of all that's being done and and you know it, there's so much more than the the guitar music I mean obviously what Jimmy did with a Fender Stratocaster was amazing but I mean he was also an artist uh, uh, you know the lyrics that he wrote I mean and so much of that has been preserved oh absolutely um, I remember when I was 12 years old I was really able to see a lot of his handwritten lyrics and I said wow these should be put in a book and mm -hmm. um, 
So I've been very fortunate to be able to have gathered a lot of his lyrics and I put together with Hal Leonard a 12 by 12 coffee table book that includes his handwritten lyrics and beautiful photographs because he was indeed one of the most photographed musicians of his time. And uh, I think that through that people really can recognize and maybe understand him a little bit better by reading his lyrics and uh, being able to not only hear them but kind of touch the page where uh, his writing is definitely stands out against anything else. Sure. Well, there's so much we could talk about, but just back <laughs> to the stamp real quickly. Were you involved directly with the, you know, with sort of the direction that the artwork of the of the uh, post postage stamp uh, took? Well, it's beautiful. We were we were involved a bit. You know, we provided photographs and kind of direction. But I think that the artist um, really took his his direction. And I think that it did come out beautiful. I think that listening to the music and being inspired by Jimmy, I think he really captured who Jimmy was and was about. You know, with those strat, his rings, the colors, the rainbows. Um, the butterflies from Little Wing and then also his iconic British jacket. I think that they're mm. all captured in this, this stamp. I think it's an amazing uh, piece of art that will continue on. And I plan to buy thousands of dollars worth of these stamps because this is <laughs> well, all I'm using. Well, don't buy them all. We <laughs> want to have a few for ourselves. Oh, absolutely. Now, well, it's a limited edition. I realize that. I mean, will people be able to get these from their local post office or online? How, do, how can people get this great collector's item? Both. They can go online, they can order them, um, and they can also go to their local uh, neighborhood post office and buy them. Oh, that's great. <laughs> well, Janie, thank you so much Mm -hmm. for joining us here today on The Kiosk Presents, sharing a, a little bit about your personal um, experience over so many years with Jimi Hendrix, the great legend, and uh, we wish you all the best, and uh, we certainly know that this is a, a great thing that's going to be out there by the United States Postal Service. Oh, thanks, Brian, and please watch for us. We're going to be in your town on April 1st um, at the University of Buffalo with our tribute concert. So I hope to oh, see you. Oh, wonderful. Well, absolutely. Well, we'll make sure everybody knows about that. And uh, we look forward to having you up here in Buffalo. And we'll try and make it a little warm for you, too. <laughs> oh, that would be nice. Thank you so much. At Airport Plaza Jewelers, the showroom, a really great diamond doesn't cost an arm and a leg, but really big diamonds. They don't cost an arm and a leg either. Please feel free to shop around, do some comparisons, and come on into the showroom and let us show you how many thousand dollars we can save you on a really quality diamond engagement ring. Take the 33 Expressway East to Union Road, get off, you'll see the big LED sign, and you'll see the little kiosk, but then right behind the little kiosk, the showroom, right next door to Subway. Come on down and look at some really beautiful diamond engagement rings. Again, on display, on sale, right here at the showroom.